Yeah, pouches to our people is a very special item. Um, each man, each woman for our ceremonies usually uh, carries one of those. And um, how during our ceremonies, where within the contents in there is usually cornmeal, corn pollen, various special items that the people treasure, maybe an arrowhead for the guys, maybe a bear fetish for the ladies, something special in their lives. Come from the Pueblo of Acoma, I'm a fourth generation potter. I start that on the small base and then I'll work it up into a coil. My clay that I still use is shale. We mine around the uh, west end of the Pueblo of Acoma, grind it down to a powder, mix it with the old pottery shards down to a kind of a coarse, rough texture, which enables me to build and shape pottery. And as you can see, my clay doesn't require too much water. I just mostly dampen my finger to get any of my clay moist again. I do have an abundance of styles of forms. I do still do the rope coiling technique. I make a rope and I'll twine it up and use my fingers to do the blending of each coil. What you see here, majority of the time, I do use a piece of a gourd. The gourds, I break them and I kind of shape them into different forms that I can use to shape and expand the inside of the pots. Different forms of wood petals that I use to help pull the clay up and shake the necks of the pottery. And some of the straight edge tubes are some doll knives that I use to cut around and cut out some of the shapes of the pieces as well. And then next I take a polishing stone, which is a little more of a river stone rock that I use to even smooth it a little bit more of a surface so that when he does come to the painting, he'll be able to put the white base paint on. That's what he uses. It's a, a sandstone, which he soaks and drains and polishes with a polishing stone and uses a yucca leaf for his paintbrush. He does chew the yucca leaf, gets strands of the fiber, enough of that fiber host of paint to do all his fine lining and detailing on his pottery. Mm -hmm. 